Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Jay once again. And today I bring you my review of Fedora 30, which was just recently released, which comes with Linux kernel 5.0 and GNOME 3.32. So let's go ahead and take a look at the latest release from the Fedora project. And here it is, here is Fedora 30. This is a fresh install of Fedora 30 on my System76 lemur. It's a Core i7 machine with a 512 gigabyte SSD. It is a bit old, a little over three years, I believe. But you know, it is still a great machine, still performs pretty well. And what you're seeing here is the default desktop with no applications running. We see the new wallpaper in Fedora. I'm not even sure what this wallpaper is supposed to be. It almost looks similar to the AT&T logo. Um, I'm not really sure what, what this is exactly. But um, that is one thing that they do change. They change the wallpaper in every release. But that's actually one of the few things they change from a user-facing experience. This is, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, GNOME 3.32, which is the latest version of the GNOME desktop environment. And if I open up, let's just say files, for example, you'll see that nothing much has changed here. GNOME 3.32 does have a new theme and I feel like it looks better than previous releases. However, it isn't that big of a difference for me. I really feel like GNOME needs to spend more time on their user interface to make it look better, but I'm glad that they have done some work on that. Even if it's not an astronomical difference, it's still welcome that they're putting attention here. So you see the new icon theme, which looks very similar to the old one. It just looks a little bit more modern, as does the window border here at the top. And what you're seeing here is GNOME 3.32. This isn't Fedora's theme. They don't theme it. They just give you GNOME as GNOME developers intended. So that's not to say that they don't make any tweaks at all. They do a few, but for the most part, you're getting vanilla GNOME with no changes at all. So if you're looking for a distribution that ships plain GNOME without any changes, then that might be one use case there for you uh, if that's something that you're looking for. But other than that, they don't change very much from one release to the next. Speaking of things that don't seem to change very often, let's talk about the installation process. For the most part, the installation process has not changed at all. If you've seen me go through the installation process of Fedora in the past, you could probably pick any of those videos I've done and walk through it the same way in this release and it would probably work just fine. I haven't noticed any difference. And that brings me to one small issue that I have with this release, which is basically the same issue I have with every Fedora release. They don't change the installer from one release to another. I would like to see some kind of improvements here. More options would be great. The options you're presented with are fine for pretty much most people. I would like to see more partitioning options, LVM options. I mean, these options do exist, but just not at the same level that other distribution installers seem to have. So that is one downside. So I would like to see some improvement made in the installer. But then again, the installer is something you hopefully only see one time because basically you install Fedora and then you can upgrade from one release to the next. So if you're doing it right, the installer is something that you should only see just one time. But I do want to mention that I feel like they probably could use a little bit of attention to be spent on the installer to uh, give that a basic facelift, and I hope they do that in a future release. So at this point in the review, I'd like to talk about the new features, the improvements that were made in this release, but before we get to that, I do want to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is the largest independently owned open source software company, and their platform allows you to spin up your own Linux instances in the cloud on demand. Whether you want to set up a quick Linux instance to go through one of the tutorials on my channel, or you want to create your own cloud infrastructure, Linode's platform makes it easy to do that, and their cloud manager is awesome. If you'd like to set up a cloud application quickly, they now offer cloud apps that are one-click installations for things like game servers, LEMP stacks, LAMP stacks, WordPress, and more. Linode has data centers all over the world, with their most current one, their 10th data center, opened in Toronto, Canada, which satisfies all Canadian data compliance requirements. And regardless of what your favorite distribution is, they have a wide selection of distributions that you could run on your new cloud server. In fact, you could run Fedora 30 in the cloud right now by choosing Fedora when you create your very own Linode. 
I highly recommend you check them out. Linode is the provider of my infrastructure and I couldn't be happier. So definitely check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linode infrastructure. So new features, what can you expect to take advantage of if you were to install or upgrade to Fedora 30? One of the big improvements here is kernel 5.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a terminal here and we can see that I have installed here from a fresh installation, kernel 5.0.9. So in regards to Linux kernel 5.0, there's a lot of new features, but not any of them are like super huge or anything like that. There's a lot of smaller improvements and a large number of smaller improvements. So I think that there's at least one improvement for every type of user. In my case, I like to play games, for example. So there's now support for AMD FreeSync. So if you have a supported AMD GPU and a FreeSync enabled monitor, then you could take advantage of FreeSync support on your machine. So that would definitely help uh, smooth out your gameplay, for example. But but of course, that's not going to benefit everyone. Not everyone is playing games, but if you took a look at the feature list for 5.0, I think there's probably something for you. And it's definitely welcome to have a distribution that has 5.0 shipped by default. Now, in addition to that, I also mentioned that we have the latest GNOME release, which is GNOME 3.32. So in regards to the speed increase for GNOME 3.32, I feel like if you're running an older version of Fedora and then you upgrade to this one, you'll definitely notice that everything is snappier and more responsive. Now that being said, the speed increase isn't astronomical. For example, if you had an older machine that struggled to run GNOME, the speed increase in this version isn't vast enough to where you'll now be able to run GNOME comfortably on a machine that didn't used to run GNOME in the past. You'll notice a speed increase, but it's not a game changer. But anything that GNOME can do to increase performance is of course welcome. And it is something that you'll definitely benefit from if you upgrade to Fedora 30. And while you can't see it in this video, another improvement in Fedora 30 is the Flickr free boot experience. And what this means is when you're first starting up your computer, you'll see the boot splash like you normally would see in any distribution, but it's gonna be more consistent. And I think that's definitely a welcome change because it makes the release look a bit more professional. So in other distributions, it's very common that the boot splash or you know, like the boot logo or animation that shows up when you first turn on your computer will basically be very inconsistent. You might not see it at all. So you might just see a black screen. Maybe you'll see the boot splash for a few seconds and then it goes away, or maybe it comes on right away, but then it ends prematurely. It always made Linux boot screen seem very immature and unprofessional to me. And I've always wondered why they can't seem to fix that. It's been a problem for as long as boot splash screens existed. It's just the one thing that Linux distributions could never seem to get right. For that reason, I'm very glad to see that Fedora has seemingly achieved that in this release. And the reason why I'm uh, saying seemingly is because on this particular machine, which again is a uh, lemur from System76, that's the type of machine it is, it has an Intel video card on it and the process has been Flickr free, which hence the name Flickr free. It, it's just as it's advertised. I see the boot splash show up, the entire boot process, and it looks very professional and I like it quite a bit. I think it's a very welcome change, but I haven't had a chance to try it on AMD or Nvidia. It's often the case that these boot splash screens will work better on one GPU versus another, but I haven't had a chance to try it on other GPUs yet. But what I can tell you is that on this particular Intel card, it actually looks like a very professional boot screen. So while I feel like it's great that they actually fixed this and made it look good, I also feel like we shouldn't see the boot splash very often because we're running Linux, we shouldn't be rebooting our machines very often. There shouldn't be very many situations that require us to reboot. So I feel like if you're doing a distribution right, you really shouldn't see the boot splash very often. And you know, reboots are necessary for updates in this release. So it is something that you'll probably see more often, but I would like to see something like live patch being integrated here that would minimize having to reboot at all. But if you do have to reboot, it's great to see that you'll have what actually looks like a professional boot screen. So one of the things that I like about this distribution is that GNOME boxes is included by default. 
This distribution is geared more towards system administrators and developers. So you could basically, straight from a fresh install, assuming that your CPU supports it, you can actually go ahead and create a virtual machine. I'm not gonna go through the process here because I've done it in other videos, but you know, even in beta, when I was going over this with the uh, beta of Fedora 30, I found that this actually worked very well. So, you know, it's actually something that I think is very welcome. I'm glad they do this, and I wish other distributions would do the same thing. But other than that, the standard default applications apply here. We have Firefox as our default browser, Rhythmbox for managing our music collection. We have files for basically going through your file system and browsing your files, just like it says. And we also have a terminal here by default, and if I go to all, we have cheese for webcam, we have a calendar app, we have photos. We basically have essentially everything that you would need in a default distribution. So out of the box, you have everything you need, including LibreOffice, which is great. So the majority of the things that you need are installed here by default, letting you be productive quickly right from a fresh installation. And then we also have GNOME software right here. And this is like your central hub for installing applications in Fedora. So if there's an application you want to install, you could basically just click through the various categories here to find an application that you'd like to run. So for example, I have Frozen Bubble right here. This is an awesome game. I always make sure that my distros have this installed. So basically all you do is you simply click install and you can see that the application is installed. So you simply launch it. And now I'm able to play Frozen Bubble, which like I mentioned, is a really fun game. Highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're a fan of the old Neo Geo Bust Move games from uh, the 90s. So this is a fun game, but it just shows you how easy it is to install applications. And then once you have installed an application, you'll see it in the list here on the Installed tab, and I have Frozen Bubble here because I installed it but you also get an opportunity to remove something as well, including the default applications that come with the release. I didn't install any of these, but Frozen Bubble, so I could even remove GNOME boxes, file roller, cheese, whatever I wanted to. I could do that right from GNOME software, and then we also have a tab that's specific for updates. But if you're like me and you're more old school and you prefer the terminal, you can still do that. So you could just simply open up a terminal and you can use the DNF command to install an application. So for example, I wanna install the Chromium web browser. So I'll just do sudo DNF install Chromium. Put in my super secret password here. Then I'll say yes to install that. And now that's installed. So if I go here to the applications menu, you can see that I now have Chromium installed. Now package management in Fedora has always been, in my opinion, clumsy. Installing applications takes longer in Fedora than it does in comparable distributions, especially those that are based on Debian. The apt-get utility just handles everything much faster. Fedora just feels sluggish when I'm installing applications. Now, they did make speed improvements to DNF in Fedora 30, so it does feel like it's faster when I install applications, but not as fast as other distributions. For some reason, it just seems slower than others. But in addition to that, the repositories aren't as complete out of the box. Now, obviously you can install other repositories, that's fine, but comparing Fedora's out of the box repositories with other distributions, also not adding any extra repositories, I find that other distributions have a wider selection of applications and I'll often find something is missing. So for example, the CMuse music player, my favorite command line music player, is simply not available in Fedora 30. Now, granted, I could probably add another repository and get that added in there, but then Debian, Ubuntu, and other distributions include that by default. So I feel like the default selection of packages in Fedora always lags behind the competition. That being said, package management isn't necessarily terrible. It is easy to install an application, especially if you use the GUI and you wanna use GNOME software, couldn't be easier, and it does work as advertised. 
I just feel like it's more sluggish and the selection isn't as great as the competing distros. So overall, what's my opinion of Fedora 30? I think that it's a great distribution in general, but it's a really hard distribution to review, and it's also a hard distribution to recommend. They do target system administrators and developers primarily, so it's not gonna be a distribution that you are going to install on an average person's computer because you're probably going to lean towards Ubuntu or Linux Mint in the case of that. But Fedora in general doesn't necessarily do any one thing well. They do many things good, but they never do anything great. Package management works good. Installing applications is easy to do. It's not hard, and the problem is it's just sluggish like I mentioned, and the repositories aren't as complete as others. So while it's good, they never reach great. The performance is good, especially with GNOME 3.32, which gives you a performance boost. But somehow Fedora just feels a, a little bit more sluggish than Ubuntu, 1904, which also ships with GNOME 3.32. Fedora always seems to lag behind in performance, and I can never figure out why, because they are shipping the same kernel and the same version of GNOME as Ubuntu 1904 is, but 1904 feels much more resource efficient, snappier, and just overall more pleasant to use. In regards to hardware support, I find that Ubuntu generally does a better job. Now, Ubuntu is more focused on being for average users and developers and pretty much everyone. Ubuntu wants to target everybody from the beginner to the advanced user, whereas Fedora is targeting intermediate to advanced, so I understand that it's not going to necessarily be a great fit for everyone, but it is a mixed bag and it's hard to recommend it against Ubuntu when Ubuntu caters to a wider audience. Now, if you're a, an individual that's managing CentOS servers, for example, you prefer the RPM package type, you're used to DNF, or you just, you're just using Red Hat or CentOS in your environment, I think you'll find that Fedora will fit in better with your workflow. That's not to say that all the technologies in Fedora 30 are gonna make their way into CentOS. Some will, some won't. But it might fit in better in your ecosystem if that's you. And if you're a fan of Fedora already, then there's no reason not to upgrade to this release. Now, if you're on the fence looking for a distribution, I would recommend to look elsewhere. While Fedora is good and Fedora 30 has some improvements, it's just not great. They never seem to reach that particular level. So what's your opinion of Fedora 30 or Fedora in general? Go ahead and leave me a comment in the show note in the comment section below. And I'll look forward to reading that. In the meantime, I will be making more tutorials for you guys. So stay tuned for my channel and you'll be the first to see them if you subscribe. So go ahead and do that if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.